The JavaScript powered hardware. Uh, I've actually been accused twice for having a severe mental disability for suggesting that JavaScript should be running on hardware. And uh, I totally forgot about this part, but who am I? Uh, first off, I'm someone who doesn't usually make these, these who am I slides, but I realize you probably should have it. Uh, but I'm a solutions architect at Node Source. Um, I have a bunch of cats, and I like JavaScript mostly. So back to JavaScript on the server. You may ask one thing. Why, though? JavaScript on the server seems like absolutely insane. Uh, it is about the highest level language you can find on some of the lowest level hard or JavaScript on the on hardware because you're essentially running it on just raw hardware. Uh, you have uh, you're having CPU instructions that are sending opcodes down. That's not what JavaScript does. JavaScript makes things move. So let's uh, take a step back and actually like figure out what what was JavaScript actually built for. So famously built in um, you know a week or so, uh, it essentially allows web pages to interact with users in real time. Uh, creates an environment where code can be executed on the client machine. Uh, you can think of stuff like uh, you know if you're running like an in-game like a an in-game browser or something, you have like an engine that's running and essentially crunching a bunch of numbers thousands of times a second. Uh, and it also provides a, uh, provides a clear and easy API to the DOM. It allows you to manipulate the web page and such. And that's kind of the basis for all of our frameworks. But what do these things all have in common? They are user interfaces. This is key here. Why? Because what is the difference between a button on a web page, click here, and a physical button? There's not a ton of difference here, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at uh, some kind of event, right? Uh, you have something that's, that's waiting for input, and let's say a button's being pressed. Uh, and in, uh, in AVR, for example, you use uh, usually some kind of interrupt. Uh, so ISR uh, means interrupt service routine or interrupt service request. I actually forgot what that means, but uh, use all the time. And um, you essentially will do something when the button is pushed, or more specifically, when it changes from low to high, which is pretty low level there. Uh, but with, uh, with JavaScript, we kind of have these, these things built in, right? Uh, we have events. We have an entire event system here. We have a loop, that, an event loop that just keeps running and running. And so we can actually register callbacks, things that will happen when a certain event is fired. And, and in this case, button on change. You can do something when the button is pushed. Now, what's really more expressive here? Uh, something where you're setting weird bit masks and bit fields and stuff. Uh, I mean, I honestly could not tell you any of any of the AVRC stuff by memory. I always have to look at the data sheet or something. But uh, I can do, and most of us can probably do, given a little bit of practice, the GPIO library, because it's so simple. It, it looks the same as everything else that we're used to. And so, like, Usually when we think of kind of hardware, or usually when you think of like JavaScript runtime on, on the server, like not necessarily the browser, but in other places, we usually think of Node. And uh, Node lends itself to a lot of different things. It's, uh, it's, it's very fast, it's built on V8, you know, it's great for a bunch of things. And uh, we usually will find it in these platforms like Tessel, Raspberry Pi, and uh, the BeagleBone. Um, but the interesting thing about these is that uh, the Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone are both Linux machines, so you get to have Linux OS. And it's like, oh, right, well, Tessel at least will do it. No, Tessel is OpenWRT. That's the same thing that a lot of routers are actually running right now. So Node.js requires a full operating system behind it. And that's not feasible for something like an STM32 with quite possibly like 32 megabytes, not gigabytes, megabytes of RAM. Like the last time you probably had to work with that was probably playing a game when we were all like really, really young on the computer trying to get some you know silly pinball game to actually work without lagging. Um, that's 32 megabytes of RAM is not a lot. Uh, I'm sure like uh, your a Spotify page in Chrome takes twice that in a second. So <coughs> basically, there is a platform called Esperino. And this is a, an actual STM32. 
just a standard microcontroller off the shelf. But uh, this is both a hardware and a software package. And so you'll see up there, uh, that's, that's actually the one that I have to, to show you guys today. That is the uh, Esprino uh, Wi-Fi, which uh, you can't see it on this picture, but you see a little chip sticking out here. That's actually an ESP32, which is a really popular Wi-Fi module. And those things are super cool because you can do anything Wi-Fi there. You can like sniff packets if you want. You can create fake networks. Um, but I guess less interestingly, you can actually just connect to a Wi-Fi network. But anyway, uh, so we're going to go to demo time, AKA time to see Murphy's Law in action. So the, the really cool thing about the Esperino is uh, they actually have like this little web IDE that's, that's built in, or that not built in, um, that's, uh, it's actually like a Chrome add-on. So you can just go there, click a button, and then it works. So I'm going to try, hopefully with some success, to attach this USB cable here and have it not blow up my face. So this guy, um, this is what's going to run JavaScript. Impressive, right? Not really, because it's not doing anything right now. But it will be once it actually runs. I saw a light go on and turn off. That might not be good. But we're going to hit connect. And I have no idea what the difference is between these two, but I'm going to choose TTY because that looks better. Ah, and it's connected. So I'm going to go ahead and send this on down. I think it's a save now. It's the send. And the really cool thing is, uh, because this is going through a serial port, you can actually see all the console output on the left-hand side here. So uh, I wrote a little program here. All this does is connect to a Wi-Fi network, which um, should be the Urban Hive Private. So if you're connected to that, uh, you should be able to go to this IP address, uh, 10.2.1.85, and it should send you hello world. So let's, let's see if that actually works. And then if, if that happens, then you're actually loading it from this little thing, I think. Unless, of course, it doesn't. So let us try that. I have no idea what that was. Dot one dot eighty five. Oh, and it can't be reached. That's okay. I have no idea why it's doing that, but this is also why hardware is like super annoying because nothing actually works correctly anyway. So for for all we know, this is just smoke. Wait, did I not bind to a port? Oh yeah, I'm listening to 880, 8080. Oh well. It should be the Urban Hive Private, and then the Urban Hive Private. Yeah, what was that? What in the hell? Yeah. So that's also the other caveat. Because it's not Node, the errors are different. And notice I said different, not better. So the errors are different. I don't know what the, what in the world that is supposed to do, uh, probably without Googling. But um, that's terrible, because that totally worked on a different network about two hours ago. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do the thing that like people pay us developers a lot of money to do, and that's googling. So uh, let's see. Oh, it's an ESP eighty two sixty six problem. It looks like, or at least it was reported there. It could literally be anything. Okay, so I'm thinking that this probably isn't something that's a bug here because that has to do with commands to the ESP 8630 whatever 
e to two sixty six. So the how that works is um, the uh, the Esperino communicates with that Wi-Fi chip through what's called a, um, uh, a a UART, which is essentially Universal Asynchronous Transmit and Receive, and uh, it sends down commands and what looks like text down the line to it to do things like uh, you say connect here, connect here, do this, send this packet, do this, and uh, so it might be a problem with the library itself or it might be something that I did on on my code but uh, because this is probably a an issue with the commands uh, it's probably a bug in the uh, Esperino software and that's kind of unfortunate because that probably means we're not going to see it right now however there are uh, there are some other things we can do, and I was gonna do a uh, more demo with like flashing lights and stuff, but it doesn't really translate well from unless we're looking at a, a screen of that, and that's why I wanted to be able to do this. But um, uh, after this is over, I do come up and look at it, and we can uh, we can try and make it do some stuff after hours. But anyway, uh, so that's kind of the the basic exploration of JavaScript on hardware. Uh, does anyone have any questions? To be clear, there's, there's an interpreter running on there. Yes. Okay, sorry. It is a, is it a, yeah. It is a full job, not a full, it is a JavaScript interpreter. And it's Esperino software. And there's a couple of other ones too that will work as well. But it's built for very low power uh, pieces. So you're not using Node, not using V8. It's just its own separate interpreter. And it's not a transpiler either. It doesn't transpile this into C. Mm, yeah. <laughs> what could I put on there? Well, I could put a blinking program, the classic hello world. Uh, you know, and that, that, that sounds pretty unimpressive because it is. And um, I can also do, uh, so uh, the classic example that I do all the time is I make uh, RFID access systems. Um, not professionally, just because I am a nerd and I like doing that. So for uh, my so at node source, we had this door that uh, there were only three key cards for. And no one could figure out how to make it work. So I set up, a, I set up one of these guys connected to the Wi-Fi and a card reader. And everyone had their own cards that uh, they buzzed in. And so what I had was uh, I had a small website running. So I used, uh, it, was, it wasn't Express. It was, a, it was a RESTful or RESTify. That's the one. I used Rustify, uh, which was very small, very small web framework. And uh, I made a small little admin panel that allowed someone to go in and add and remove users. And that was all running on this little guy. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a terribly big program, but it wasn't small either. And it worked, mostly. Till the next uncaught exception, of course, because it's JavaScript, so we can't be without that. Oh, it's incredibly barren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I'm only evangelizing it right now because I thought it's, I think it's really cool and I think it could use some more people involved with it. And that's one of the reasons why I have gotten so into the Esperino. How much does that board cost? This one you can buy from Adafruit from, I don't even remember. It's like 32 bucks. 32 bucks, there you go. Yeah. More or less. It's in the 30s, probably 40 after it's shipped. Do you think that could like pump audio? Absolutely. Yeah. Not very well, but it can. Yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to think of something. Yeah. Oh no. Um. I. So. Okay. So audio is usually transmitted through a protocol called uh, I2S, and uh, while the um, the STM32 on this board supports that. I'm not sure if they have the bindings for it in JavaScript yet. But um, we can probably look real quick, because that might be interesting. Um, because like, I saw something similar to the TESOL, but like, the TESOL is like, gigantic compared to that thing. Yeah, the TESOL is I don't know, like this big. Yeah. And it, it gets really hot, too, because it's essentially running 
Linux and also Node and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, but um, this is also kind of the other interesting piece of this is that all this stuff is is actually put out by uh, Esperino, and it's very uh, most of it works as you would expect, but there's a good amount of it that does not. So you would need to kind of play around with it. Um, so, so for example, like we we have like S, uh, it has raw access to SPI, things like that. Uh, I see I2C, which is normal. I don't see an I2S. Nothing audio. Oh well. Uh, so probably no audio yet, but. I'm sure it's actually not a big deal to add. This one, no, it's way, it's way too small. I mean, but uh, it's actually very similar to the Arduino because of the way that it's uh, all the pins and the ports are. So, so for example, on this, uh, there is a port A and port B. Both of them are uh, eight bits wide, just like the Arduino ports. And uh, you just write bits to it, and then it will write the one or the zero off and on to the pins it exposes. And likewise, you can always you can have an input, you can set it to input, and then read those bits too. Any ports are five volt compliant, so most of them should be matched if you can find the right pin. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Then um, I also have up here a couple of other boards. So I've I just got the Pocket Beagle, which just came out. Uh, I haven't even opened it yet, but that one's pretty cool. It runs Linux, so it's like, that's, um, it's gonna be pretty heavy, but it'll run JavaScript, hopefully. But yeah, any other questions? Is the uh, ESP board hard soldered on there? Yes, it is. It is very much hard soldered. And uh, you can probably see the little shiny thing. Anyway. Do you have the Wi-Fi board connected to? Do the Wi-Fi what? Yeah, what Wi-Fi board is um, you plug it in? Oh yeah. Um, so uh, it uh, it did connect to Wi-Fi, which was cool. Uh, I have it set up so it gives me the IP address of this and the MAC address of the uh, of the gateway. And I just did that just to get more information out, but. Anyway, but yeah, so it does connect just fine. I'm not sure why the server isn't working. Well, as far as I know, this is, this is a less than private network because everyone kind of knows the password there. Anyway. Yes, <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. I'll censor it. Sounds good. <laughs>